Welcome everyone to the 2019 Global Virtual Summit. I'm really delighted that you're able to join us for this half day session and to take part in the great conversations that we're, we're initiating today and, and thinking about innovation and how uh, innovation, especially around data, can help you and your organization to create true value uh, for you and your customers. The theme that I'm talking about today is really about why we need to rethink innovation in analytics. Uh, it's an it's a area that for me is really dear to my heart. Um, you know, as a software vendor, as someone who founded a business and who thinks about analytics pretty much every waking hour that I'm around, um, you know, it is, it's the area that, that for me is probably the most important and critical component of what we do how we think about our customers and how our customers can create value from the innovation that's ger generated through that value chain. And so in thinking about that, the first thing I want to do is really sort of frame up what do we mean when we talk about innovation. Uh, innovation is a really interesting topic and there's lots, of, there's lots of books on it, there's lots of research on it. Uh, but for me, when I think about innovation, I think about transformational value being generated by somebody. Right? And so when we think about that, generally speaking, most people who think about innovation think about it in terms of how it helps them. Uh, from my perspective and from the way in which we drive Yellowfin and think about development Yellowfin, we think about it slightly different. We think about the tool sets and the suite that we're building and the solutions that we're creating and asking ourselves, how do our customers and our partners create transformational value from their data using the tools that we create. And that's a really different and nuanced approach. Right? So I can talk about all the things that we've innovated on as a software vendor, and that's kind of interesting. But what I'm most passionate about is how people take the tool sets, take what we have, and truly innovate. You know, our ability to innovate is, is defined by the software that we build. Our customers' and partners' ability to innovate is fundamentally designed by what they can take with us and they can, how they add their data to that mix and how they create new products and services that they take to market that are truly unique, that are differentiated, and that create transformational value for them. And that's what gets me super, super excited. And it's all about that transformational value. So, you know, it's very easy to innovate. It's very hard to create transformational value. And it's very simple, and most people tend to think about innovation uh, in, in fairly abstract terms. But as I said, I want to bring it back to this idea of value and who creates value and where the value lies. Um, and a really good example of this, for me, is Google Maps. If you ask anyone today about Google Maps, uh, they will probably say it's probably been one of the greatest innovations in mankind. You know, it's been, it's, it's phenomenal. It's fundamentally changed the way I exist in my life, etc. And I'll question that. And I'll question the whole innovation cycle around Google Maps. And why do I do that? Because prior to Google Maps, surprisingly, it was very, very rare that I got lost. Most people I know didn't get lost either. So somehow we were all going from A to B. And in Melbourne in particular, there was this guide called Melways. It's a big fat book. It was a whole map. And that's pretty much everyone had one of those. What Google Maps did was truly innovate around mapping. It completely disrupted an industry, disrupted the industry of maps. Um, but it added convenience to the consumer. Our lives are a little bit more convenient because of maps, but our lives haven't transformed. We haven't created transformational value ourselves. And the person, and ultimately the entity that got transformational value was Google. Google was the one who innovated and all of the value from Google Maps was captured within the Alphabet group. You know, it wasn't made and it didn't trickle down to the very, very end user. And so when I think about innovation, as I said coming back, the innovation that we do and the way in which we, we create transformational value it's about taking tool sets that we build, the infrastructure that Yellowfin provides our partners and customers, and creating transformational value for them, not necessary for us. And for me, as I said, that's where innovation starts and ends. It's our ability as a vendor to think about your needs and where you create value and to build the tools to make that happen. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. So on the whole, how does the BI and analyst industry stack up? 
So I want to take a moment to reflect on the industry and think about what is it that we've done as software vendors in the space, how have we approached innovation, and how has that really helped our customers? And I love to start with this particular survey. So this is a recent survey, and the, the results of this was published in the uh, HBR, which is uh, uh, the Big Data and AI Executive Survey. And what was really fascinating about this is, one, they surveyed a whole range of um, data experts within organizations from the CIO, the CTOs, chief data officers, etc., from you know, people who ran analytics departments, to get a sense of how they perceived organizations to be getting value from data. And so when we look at the results, 92% of respondents uh, reported that the pace of investment in big data and analytics was accelerating. So everyone's spending more money in the space, which you would think and argue is a great thing. But despite all of this investment, 72% uh, have said that they have yet to forge a data culture. 69% uh, have not created a data-driven organization. And 52% of organizations are fundamentally failing to treat data as an asset. And so for me, this is really big pause for thought. You know, we're in an industry that's been around for 30, 40 years, and we are seeing results from leaders across all industries whose job it is to work with data, whose job it is to work with technology, and we're seeing results like this. And, and it begs the question, why is there no traction? Why are, do we continue to see these issues? And so what went wrong? You know, how is it? that we've spent all of this time as software vendors building BI products and analytic products and we see results like that. And to me, that's a really fascinating question to be asking. So according to the respondents, um, and this for me is probably is really one of the most insightful statistics in the entire survey, is that 93% of respondents identify people and process to be the issues and the obstacle to change. So let's take a moment to reflect on that. What are they actually saying? They're not looking at what they've built, how they've built it. They're pretty much saying, quite frankly here, is that it's the user's problem. We've built this great stuff, but those people over there refuse to use it. And to me, this is the crux of the whole innovation problem in analytics. And I'll talk about that in length over the next few minutes. So how does the industry historically responded to these kind of low rates of adoption uh, and thinking about analytics? Well, the first one really was to shift analytics from being a very IT-centric process into the business. So providing self-service BI, we can fix this. We can just give the business the ability to go and query the data themselves and do all that themselves. Now, there's a big challenge with that. And that challenge is that everyone has a day job. The head of sales has a day job. His job is to go and sell or her job is to go and sell. Uh, head of marketing has a day job, um, you know, to go and find more leads. And their job is not to sit at a desktop to analyze data 24-7. And so that was the first problem, is that we just simply shifted the problem. We just said, look, forget about it. Let's not have a bottleneck in IT. Let's push it to the business. The second way we address it is by simply going, now that we've shifted to them, we go, well, they're not using it well enough. They can't be data literate. Let's focus on that. Let's go and help them become more data literate. Let's spend some time on that problem. Um, and then the final one is, you know, forget everything else. You know what we really need to do is we need to train the business to become far more technical. They've got to be able to use these technical tools. That's the future. This is the way they need to, to work. And it's these responses that continue to underline the fundamental problem. And that is that we continue to blame the business. The business, the people who are not using these technologies, who are the ones that drive value from these technologies, um, it's fundamentally their fault. And I think when we think about that and we just sort of say it as simply as that, you realize the paradox of that statement, that you have IT and IT vendors and software vendors building product for the wrong people. And we're innovating in the wrong space. And we need to think about it very differently. So, and this is a great quote. This is, this is from uh, Gartner, that despite all the evidence, the analytics industry and its practitioners continue their love affair with the dashboard. 
You know, the central theme of analytics, the central delivery mechanism of analytics to the business is the dashboard. And so as a result of that, when we think about innovation, we think about how people use data. That's probably the way I'd like to start. It's just questioning that paradigm, thinking about is the dashboard the most relevant place to start when we think about analytics? And that's where I say it's time to fundamentally start to rethink innovation and time to innovate in new and interesting ways. So, you know, in starting that process, the first thing I would like to do is to, I suppose, ultimately just, you know, acknowledge the fact that there is innovation. You know, for me to sit here and say there's been no innovation in the space is a little bit ridiculous. You know, over the last 30 years, there has been a huge raft of changes in our industry, and I've been lucky enough to be a part of many of those changes and to see those changes take place. You know, we've seen, you know, the rise of analytic databases, the ability to query vast amounts of data, um, and we've seen, you know, changes in UI and changes in technology. But there's a challenge with all of these things. The first one is that they f the innovations tend to be very functional. So we've seen a lot of innovation in data preparation and ETL tools. We've seen a lot of innovation in data viz and in data science tools. Um, but we haven't seen it being cross-functional. We haven't seen it being a holistic approach to, to change. Um, we've seen a lot of information in what I call technical wizardry, you know, those sort of the, the super fast databases, the things that, that, you know, the geeks in the room, myself included, get pretty excited about. Now, I wake up every day and I read stuff and I go, it's amazing. But the reality is it's amazing for me. It's not necessarily amazing for the people who need to use this technology to make fundamental changes. Um, and then finally, there's this mega vendor dominance. There are huge vendors in the marketplace that drive the conversation around how analytics works and should be used. And they do this via you know, the, the way in which they engage with analysts, and essentially they create this messaging that says, if you're going to be data literate, if you're going to have a data-driven organization, here are the three things you must do. Now, those three things, ironically, just happen to be the three things they do. And so innovation is being really stymied by these siloed approaches uh, to the way in which the industry as a whole has attacked the problem. So why is it being stifled, you know, ultimately, when we look at it in detail? Um, for one, I think there's a paradigm lock-in. And, and my favourite thing that I love to talk about is that, you know, when I started uh, working many, many, many years ago, dashboards already existed and, and actually had been around for about 10 years. So we're talking about 30 years now of the dashboard paradigm. And when I look at, if I do a survey and you look at, you know, all the dashboards you can find online, if you sort of do a Google image search, if you go to design places, etc., what you will notice is that there's a fundamental design principle around dashboards, and which fundamentally means they all kind of look the same. You know, they have five elements of content to them. They have big numbers, they have bar charts, they have line charts, they have pie charts, they have a table, etc. You know, there's nothing different that's being generated here. Um, and so people are by really stymied by this approach. They can't think outside the box, this kind of gridded approach to delivering data. The second area is that a lot of the vendors who build these tools, um, they sell through data analysts. And so there really there's this huge fear of alienating the analysts. I, I don't want to build a tool that's for a different audience, the business, because I might alienate the people over here. And that is holding the industry back. We continue to focus on a very small subset of people who, who use analytic tools rather than the mass market of people who actually use those tools to drive value in businesses. And then lastly, the growth in the industry uh, to date has been driven by structural shifts in the industry, not by changes in those paradigms. And so when we went from desktop to web and, from, and into the cloud, those changes created these huge structural shifts which were then considered innovation when really, when you look at the underlying changes, those changes were happening in, in every software market in the world. It wasn't unique to analytics. It was just a change of the way in which we moved and, and used tools from being desktop to web to cloud. Um, and so the result of that is that vendors can be lazy. Vendors don't have to think too hard. You know, they can simply go, a dashboard looks like this. We only sell it to those people over there, the data analysts. And you know what? As long as these mass massive structural shifts happen, we're going to be able to create new product and sell new product to market and move our customers from one platform to the next over time and be able to sell you the same thing over and over again. And that's not real innovation. It's not starting from the top down and going, how do we honestly help our customers to create tremendous value from their data. 
And that's the question that should be asked. So the impact of all of that, uh, the impact of that laziness, the impact of being able to sit there and do almost nothing, um, is that we continue to see low user adoption. You know, the, the statistics of ranges around the 20 to 30 percent range, but most organisations would not have more than 20 to 30 percent of their licences being utilised um, internally. It's a huge, huge indictment on the industry. Uh, the second we saw before, you know, is this lack of a data culture. Despite all efforts, despite all the technology we throw into the business, there's no data culture being formed. Uh, and, you know, I think, again, you know, well, if I throw you a wrench and a spanner and say, knock yourselves out, I go, well, why are not all my people turning into mechanics? It's the same problem we're facing. You know, you can't uh, simply throw people tool sets and expect them to be data literate and data centric overnight. Um, and the last one, and the most really the fundamental one, is that organisations, as a result, are failing to reap the value that their data provides. They're not generating huge returns on investment um, because they're simply using the wrong tools for the job and giving those tools to the wrong people in the organisation. And this is where we really need to change the focus. So from this perspective, I'd like to talk about the, sort of the three fundamental use cases that exist in analytics today. So when we look at our customer base and we think about how large organisations deploy analytics, there are fundamentally three audiences. And it's a continuum, right? So you can, you can move from one end of the spectrum to the other. Um, but on the one hand, you've got uh, often a developer environment where developers are creating dashboards that, and, and content that is being deployed to, to a mass audience, the consumers at the very end. Um, and they are the ones that are doing the heavy lifting. They're doing big level data preparation, ETL jobs, and creating content, and managing security, and all those sorts of things. And there tends to be very few of them. Now, highly skilled people creating great content, uh, but a few of them nonetheless. The second audience, and this is where almost every vendor sells to, is the data analyst in the room. They are the ones who take content, who create, who create um, uh, again, analysis and under, try and understand the business better and do some ad hoc work as well as creating dashboards for the business users. Um, they are the ones using, again, using data in a far more day-to-day -day, uh, methodology. They're the ones who are the ones who, who are there to understand data, who, to use data analysis techniques, etc. And then finally you've got the consumer at the very end of the, the, the chain. Now what's interesting about this, when you actually really think about where value is being generated, the value, the transformational value from data is happening in the consumer. When the consumer gets the data that they need to help them to perform their jobs well and to delight customers and to create new products, it is those people in the business that we should really be focused on because they are the ones creating value. They are the ones driving value from data. The people below them, the analysts and the developers, super, super important, but they are support people in terms of the business. You know, the business is driven by decision makers, and let's not forget that. And those are the people that we should be focused on and building product for. So what does the business user want? They want a whole range of things. Um, but the first thing they don't want to do is they don't want to roll up their sleeves and do manual data discovery. They want stuff found for them immediately, and you know, they want to be alerted to changes in their businesses that they happened. Um, they don't particularly want disjointed workflows, so they don't want to do analysis over here and then turn to there and have to do the transactions. So, you know, in an ideal world for the business user, the analytics uh, is done at point of consumption. So it's, I'm working within a tool set that allows me to have a continuous workflow rather than a disjointed workflow. Um, I want to have context in the numbers. So if, if I'm in leadership and I'm, and I'm running a business, I want to have more than just simply a dashboard. I want to know the contextually what's happened. What did we do in the business? What changed? What are the actions we did? What are our competitors doing that are influencing our numbers? That requires context and a broader understanding of what's happening. They want dashboards that drive action. So again, so many dashboards today are just simply a delivery tool for numbers rather than being the start of a workflow that says, have a look at this, and prescriptively, because of these numbers and the way they've turned out, these are the customers that you should be contacting today, you should be offering them a new loan, or you need to provide them more support, et cetera, et cetera. Dashboards can do that if you build prescriptive analytics and actionable workflows into them. Um, they, want, they don't want to just receive static reports and PDFs via email. Again, completely contextualist. You know, that, that stuff goes straight into the garbage bin. They want to be able to interact with their data, ultimately. And for the most important part, and I think from a user experience perspective, they want to use tools that are designed for them. 
they don't want to have tools that are designed for the data analyst. So what does that mean? So when we think about analytics as a whole then, there's sort of three key themes um, you know, from a, a business user's perspective. They want real-time actionable analytics that most likely is going to be delivered via a phone. You know, that is the device that we have that lets you snack on information. We do this all the time. You know, we get a feed for Facebook, for LinkedIn, etc., and we can quickly look at it, understand it, and make some decisions about what we'll do next. Uh, they want analytical applications. They want more than dashboards. They want to be able to actually transact with their data to make decisions there and then in line in real time and actually close the loop on decision making. And then for that context, they want data storytelling. They want to be able to use data to underpin core decision making in the organization. They want to use it as a persuasive tool um, to help align the organization to strategy and to help everyone to understand what they need to do and get on the same page and all run in the same direction. And this is a terribly long quote from Gartner and I'll let you take the time to read it on the screen. Um, but this is one of the main barriers uh, to adoption that's been identified by Gartner. It's that last point in particular is, is around uh, building workflows into analytic solutions. And I think, for me, when I think about innovation, I think about us as a vendor, I think one of the huge opportunities is fundamentally around this problem. You know, for many years in particular, BI vendors have kind of washed their hands of the whole workflow issue entirely and simply said, you know what, it's easy if you just take our stuff and embed it into your stuff. What I think we've realized as a result of many years of trying to do that is that fundamentally that one of, that's one of the core areas of innovation that should be owned by BI vendors. Um, we should be saying to our customers, bring the workflows to us. We'll create the environment and the tool sets that will allow you to integrate diverse workflows into an analytics tool to let you drive action, to, to achieve the goals you want to achieve and create new and interesting applications. We'll allow our customers to innovate by providing them the tools to do low or no code development to achieve that outcome. That to me is one of the fundamental new ways in which I think analytics can help to build transformational value in our customer set. And so when we think about this and we think about going beyond the dashboard um, let's take a, you know, a complete step back and start again. You know, when I started with analytics, we were pretty much all at phase one, which is really operational reporting. This is the stuff that got emailed out. These were printed reports, etc. They added you know, almost no value to an organization. Yes, they kind of help people to do their jobs, but fundamentally no one relied on it as a way to build transformational value, to really think and analyze the business, to think about their customers, what they were buying, how they were buying, etc. The next phase that we saw was really the, the data visualization, the rise of data visualization, you know, the, the delivery of dashboards into the business, tools that allowed you to slice and dice your, your data you know, more quickly and more rapidly. What they fundamentally relied on though was users to manually join the dots of what they needed to do. First they had to log into those tools, I have to use them, I have to slice and dice, I have to be the data analyst as a business user to get value out of it. Um, it's not my job, it's not my day job, I'm unlikely to do it. The result of which, and you know, going back to the stats we saw, is that we have very, very low user adoption. And therefore, very low value being delivered. And the final way, and I think this is again, when we take all the elements we just said, if we really think about the business user, and we think about how do you bring all those disparate needs together, you know, the data storytelling, the immediacy of alerts and changes and signals to, to what's happening in your data, and the ability to take action from dashboards. If you bring all of those together in a cohesive application, um, that is designed around your business. So not designed around ours, but thinking about your business and how you want to transform your organization, that is when you can take data and create transformational value in your organization. And to me, that is the most exciting thing that a BI vendor can do for you. It's our ability to help you as the customer and help you as the partner to create tools and applications that are used by business people to create new products and new services that deliver tremendous value to you and your business. And that's what gets me excited when I wake up every day and think about what we do. And so over the next few sessions, you know, when you're looking at what we're doing and thinking about Yellowfin and how we're innovating, keep these themes in mind because that's what drives us. It's that excitement about your business and your data and what we can help you to do to extract value from it that keeps us going and thinking about new and innovative ways to help you to be successful. 
So if you've got any questions, uh, feel free to use the panel there and we will respond to you in due course via email, via social channels, any way that we can. In addition, I'd say follow us for any updates. So uh, there'll be lots of news coming out on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on YouTube, and contact us directly if you want to know more as well. There's a whole great raft of sessions on today. Uh, and you know, in terms of what we're bringing to the market and the new ways we're thinking about analytics, a ton of innovation coming your way, which we're really excited to hear about how you will use this uh, to create value in your business. Thank you very much.